will kill you next time so uh, there was a question uh, which is like if rho is alpha by 7 r square then you are required to find e inside the solid non conducting sphere that's your question isn't it yeah so simple see 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 you i yeah i give you this formula now that if rho is equal to rho not r to the power of n then we can we can treat like we can for first question like given to us yeah if rho is equal to alpha by 7 r square i can just say that alpha by 7 is my rho not and r square is similar to r to the power of n isn't it so we can say that n is equal to 2 isn't it so electric field for that sphere is rho not r to the power of n plus 1 so electric field is rho not r to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 3 epsilon not this is my case isn't it so what it will be alpha by 7 r to the power of n plus 1 that becomes 3 divided by uh, 2 plus 3 which is 5 5 epsilon not that's your answer direct is that clear so we write electric field as simple electric field inside the conducting sphere as alpha by 7 r to the power of 3 divided by 5 epsilon not so that's uh, r to the Similarly, you can solve the second question also. Eight R cube is given. E inside. So we know that E is equal to rho naught R to the power of n plus. Yeah. So we do not know. Let us see that. And n plus one. Sorry, n plus three. Absolutely not. Here, electric field is varying as eight R cube. No. so how come you can know the rho not you have to find the rho equation is not the rho so look over here how to find uh, r to the power of n so here if electric field you can see that electric field is directly proportional to n to the r to the power of n plus 1 so that means r to the power of n plus 1 must be equal to r to the power of n yeah. n is equal to 2 so that means electric field is equal to uh rho not r to the power of 3 like we can write it and divided by n plus 3 that is 5 epsilon not now you can see that electric field is given as 8 r cube so r cube r cube got cancelled and we got the value of rho not by epsilon not or 80 epsilon not sorry so this implies rho is equal to rho not So not is 40 epsilon not r to the power of n, which is r to the power of. Uh, we write it as n value is 2, so r to the power of. This is your equation of rho. So you have to first compare, then you find the value of n, then you find it, uh, then you put it in the equation and you get the value of rho not, and then you get the value of rho not r to the power of n. Is that clear? ठीक है तो दिस वाज आवर पॉइंट ऑफ स्पेरिकल केसेस नाउ लुक ओवर हियर वन काइंड ऑफ स्पेशल स्पेरिकल केस कम्स एंड ट्राई टू सी इट सेज दैट लेट सपोज आई हैव अ स्पेयर ऑफ अ रेडियस आर
and inside this is where a cavity is drawn some random cavity it's not at the center and its radius is something given is there okay or you can say that oh sorry like uh it is said that that the distance between the one minute distance between the center of these cavities is given to us which is equal to a so write the question what a spherical cavity is made a formally charged solid sphere in a formally charged solid sphere as shown okay prove that prove that electric field inside it is in form inside the cavity yeah and find its value and find the electric field inside the cavity and it is said that the density of sphere is known to us rho is my given density of the charge density of the sphere do it do it fast make it this big density is yeah density is given to you go okay let us see see how to do it there is an this is an exceptional question first thing this is an important exception okay now look over here it is said that the density of a sphere is rho isn't it Is my sound is clear? No, actually it started to vibrate. Okay. Now look over here. I select C. I want to find the electric field inside. Yeah. Now I look over here. I want to find the electric field inside my spherical cavity, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So now look over here. So how to find it? The question arises is how to find it. So let's suppose I selected some point P over here. Take 
और मेरे को यहाँ पे इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड निकालना है और बताना है कि आई वॉन्ट टू से दैट दिस इफ आई सेलेक्ट एनी पॉइंट इन साइड इवन इफ आई सेलेक्ट दिस पॉइंट पी ओवर हियर इवन इफ आई सेलेक्ट दिस पॉइंट पी ओवर हियर और एनी ओवर एनी पॉइंट ओवर हियर एट ऑल दिस पॉइंट द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इज यूनिफॉर्म so to what to do simple case is that see the point is what i can do is i can treat this whole thing as two different kinds of geometrical figure isn't it one the particular sphere and another my cavity inside it is that clear or not yeah we will treat it as two separate bodies one having positive density and another having negative density are you able to get me so the point is very very simple that if i can treat it like positive and negative density is function then definitely i can find out that what is the electric field inside it so this is my positive density function and this is my minus one. and if i add the electric field so net electric field will be what <coughs> it will be electric field due to complete s square minus the electric field due to cavity isn't it now <clears throat> what i'm treating see i'm i'm treating that this cavity is also a sphere okay so you can treat you just you just write it as charge field inside the cavity what i'm treating see the treatment is very very simple that we can't find the electric field for the cavity in a easy sense because we do not know how much charge is there so we'll just consider that negative rho exists over there because we have taken it out of the sphere itself are you able to get me so to do that simple if i want to find that point p i want to find this e net at my particular point p so i need to calculate all these electric fields at point p or not yes so that for that i can just construct a vector over here what it so now look over here e net we know that the electric field due to solid sphere is given as rho not R by three epsilon naught, isn't it? But what is this R? R is my vector quantity inside it, and this point P, if, even if it is a solid sphere, this point P lo is located inside it. And for this also, the point P is located inside. It. So they will follow the electric field of the inside region, isn't it? <coughs> so therefore, the E net at point P can be written as electric field due to complete sphere, which is Rho not R vector is what O P vector divided by three epsilon not isn't it minus electric field due to charge field so this is what Rho not um what it into this is which vector A P vector divided by three epsilon not is that clear or not now if i just follow the triangle law then we can write in it as in at that point p vector as rho not by 3 epsilon not form and <coughs> op vector and if i can reverse this vector then it will follow the triangle law law so plus pa vector isn't it but what is this op vector plus pa vector it is oa vector so in it is p rho not o a vector divided by 3 epsilon not and the value of electric field therefore becomes at any point inside the cavity rho not a by 3 epsilon not which is which means that it is uniform because this electric field is just de dependent upon the distance between the two centers are you able to get me of the sphere yeah distance between the two center two distance between the two centers only you have to say like that is that clear
Yeah. So the point is, if I want to find for the electric field for the cavity, I need to consider. I need to consider that it is made up of a negative charge, and we are trying to find the superposition of the electric field at point P. Are you able to get me? So first, it is due to the positive charge minus the electric field due to the negative charge system. Is that clear or not? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So look over here. Let us do one more similar kind of a question. Which you have already done. Let's suppose if I have a solid cylinder. Okay. Let's axis is like this way, and then in it, I consider a hollow cylinder. Well done. So it can it, it is it visible to you that I'm considering a hollow cylinder? Yes. Once again, the question is simple that this between the like for this cylinder also there will be an axis. Axis. For a cylinder, what's the meaning of axis? If this is my cylinder, and axis means it pass the that line which passes through the center of the cylinder or not? So we keep all this rest. So look over here. The distance between the axis of this cylinder. Means the lines which are passing through the center of the cylinder is given as A. Okay. So question is simple. A cylindrical cavity is made inside the uniformly charged. Solid cylinder. Okay. Once again, prove that electric field is uniform and it's valid. Electric field inside the cavity is how much? Uh, once again, the charge will be low only, you Once again, simple thing, man. See, if I consider any point P, then so it 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 will look like this way or not? That this is my point O, the center of the cylinder, and this is A, the center of the cavity, and this is my point P inside the cavity, isn't it? And once again, you can join them by vectors. 
So electric field net at any point P inside the cavity will be what? Inert at P is electric field due to uh, solid cylinder, isn't it? Minus electric field due to uh, charge filled in cavity. If this is rho, this is minus rho. So this is what? Rho by 2 epsilon naught. That's what we calculated now. Into OP vector minus rho into AP vector divided by 2 epsilon. So this is what rho common, rho by 2 epsilon not common, OP vector plus I can write it as PA vector. So electric field inert once again inside the cavity of the cylinder is what rho by 2 epsilon not into the distance between the centers of cavity which is A which is uniform basically. Yeah. So in a sphere it was 3 epsilon naught. In cylinder it is rho a by 2 epsilon naught. And once again this is uniform. Is that clear? Are you able to get me? Okay. Now moving to next point. Now there is C. Today we are doing, we are trying to do some exceptions over here. We calculated the electric field for our cylinder, solid sphere, everything, uh, potential also. And but one thing we didn't take, like uh, when we calculated for this electric field for the infinitely long solid cylinder, we didn't calculate its potential, isn't it? Yes, we calculated the potential for our solid sphere and all, isn't it? Now look over here, I want to talk about, so, we just give the heading, potential, because this is an exception which we are going to do today, okay. We should give the heading, potential difference due to <clears throat> infinitely long wire or cylinder. So, see, electric field calculation for infinitely long wire was what simple. We need to consider as like uh, infinite wire and electric field outside is lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught r. Inside point it was flux was 0, but Outside it was equal to, so we told that electric field is rho r by 2 epsilon naught and we got the relation of rho and lambda, isn't it? Are you able to get me? So this was our calculation, this was our uh, simple calculation which we got from now. So look over here. Similarly, if I consider infinitely long wire or cylinder, internal point potential difference, we can get to know, we can, we can put this value and we can get to know. But outside point, it is quite ambiguous. Why? When we draw an infinite wire, let's suppose if I take, I am taking consideration of wire because just now you got to know that for the case of infinite wire and for the case of infinitely long solid cylinder, Electric field outside of both of them is similar, isn't it? This is 2k lambda by r. So this wire is going till infinity. Okay. And this has lambda coulombs. So it has lambda and all. I want to find the potential difference between two points. Okay. So this is point A and this is point B. This is located at R of A and this is located at R of B. Are you able to get me or not? Or you can say this is R1 and this is R2. See, now why I need to consider two points, there is a reason for that. See, 
here my var is itself at infinite or not here var or cylinder itself goes to where goes to infinity now if they goes to infinity what will happen the logic is very very simple if they goes to infinity the question arises that how you are going to write the potential at infinity to be zero because this wire are itself infinite or not so the condition is that we can't define over here we cannot define a potential with a standard reference is that clear because yeah means uh, <clears throat> like our standard reference was what that v is equal to 0 at infinity isn't it so we cannot define this reference point why because because due to infinite long objects like infinite wire ya infinite seat ya fir cylinder are you able to get me or not so for all these three cases we cannot define that potential is zero at infinity because these objects goes to infinity are you able to get me or not then what we will do so the question that's what is the point over here so since we can't define zero anywhere for these kind of objects we need to consider the change in potential difference always between two points a and b are you able to get me or not yeah we will have to measure we will have to write the answer in terms of change we will not be writing the answer in terms of uh, infinity like we used to write now that potential at infinity is zero so the value will be zero one you one r1 used to get cancelled out but here one r1 will never ever cancel out yeah so let us suppose if i want to find bb minus v of a <coughs> sorry they are scalars so then it is equal to integral a dot dr vector isn't it are you able to get me and the integration must be taken from point a to means r1 to r2 isn't it because a is at r1 and b is at r2 now look over here integral e, e basically electric field for this infinite wire and all they varies as what lambda by 2 pi epsilon not that will be constant and 1 by r dr or not from r1 to r2 and that will be the negative sign isn't it but 1 by x dx it is ln x if okay remember that many people get confused that they write 1 by x as x to the power of minus 1 dx and then they do the integration but that is wrong because 1 by x dx is itself a value of ln x why do so minus of ln 2 pi epsilon not ln r and that is from r1 to r2 which is lambda by minus lambda by 2 pi epsilon not ln r2 minus ln r is that clear or not but what is this simple vv minus v is equal to this is r2 by r1 and if i absorb minus sign that will become ln r1 by r2 or not so lambda by 2 pi epsilon not ln r1 by how much r2 and this is the relation for potential for the case of which case for the case of our uh, infinite seat uh, sorry infinitely long wire and solid cylinder are you able to get me or not is that clear so this is this is my equation of potential so potential difference in due to 
infinitely long wire comma solid cylinder are able to get me or not see it we are going to discuss a little bit later on so we will start at that time is that clear so this was all the things related to finding the electric field and potential of different different cases we calculated the main main cases see we defined so many cases we first talked about rod then we talked about ring then we talked about disc then we talked about uh, a sphere and cylinder so these two we talked with respect to gauss law isn't it and these three we defined with the normal case because they can be easily found out with the normal case are you able to get me or not okay so you have to write the formula in one sheet okay? basically you have to learn all these formulas to have a grasp in a much more perfect way are you able to get me yes so look over here let us uh, start solving a little bit more so the point is one exceptional case which i am going which i want to do is like this is not given majorly in many books so this were your common cases like till a sphere but we even the question is we can even draw hemispherical cells isn't it so we want to talk about first hollow hemispherical cell and then we'll talk about solid hemispherical cell is that clear or not so let's suppose if i draw a hemispherical cell no. okay so this is my hemispherical cell set back very back okay so it's just you can think imagine like this is your hemispherical cell isn't it and is positively charged and due to this hemispherical cell i want to find my electric field at the center is that clear so look over here when you will find the electric field like see when when how to find the electric field first of all that's a big question isn't it you have to think you have to really think a lot so try it try it i'll just uh, have some diagram from google okay Let me close this. Yes. Try it. Try to find. Yeah. So look over here. I'll, I'll paste it. Yeah. now it is perfect no need to consider this so look look over here. see this is my hemispherical cell which is given to you one minute what is happening
Okay, so this is a kind of hemispherical cell which is positively charged, and in in front of it there is a plane over here, and you want to find the electric field out of this hemispherical cell at the center, isn't it? So how to do it? That's the biggest question, isn't it? So so basically to consider this, first thing you need to understand is we can't do this question with a simple formation, isn't it? What you will have to do is, you will have to consider a some kind of strip over here. Are you able to get me? Like, see, this is a hemispherical bowl or not? So can I just consider, consider a small hem rectangular strip which has the positive charges and with respect to that, since it is a continuous body, I can find the electric, electric field at the center and then I can just consider for whole hemisphere, isn't it? Are you able to get me? So look over here, if you, if you just consider this, this strip will make some angle d theta at the center. Yeah, angle is not d theta, hai ki Or ye se leke tak, iski jo length hogi, this is my radius r, isn't it? So let us consider this to be radius r. Now think of one case, see, this thing if I'm when I'm considering this radius, this strip has its own radius or not, which is present from vertical, isn't it? Yes. So let us consider if this is angle theta. Okay, this angle is how much? Angle theta. So this R will have two components, R cos theta and R sin theta, isn't it? So uh, if if I just look over here, then this component is r sin theta and this component will be my r cos theta r. so look over here see first thing i have the rectangular is uh, right uh, this is a, a rectangular strip which can be also called as ring element isn't it it's looking like a, a small ring thickness or not so i have a rectangle a ring element which has some thickness and which will be measured with respect to its a small area, isn't it? So look over here. So what will be value of dA? Basically you can see that means dA is the length of the ring into its thickness, isn't it? So if this is r and this is d theta, so this thickness will be how much? r d theta are able to get me. So dA will be how much? 2 pi r cos theta which is my length of the ring into its thickness which is r d theta. Is that clear or not? Are you able to get me? So did you got the idea that this is my area element? Is that clear? Now simple, if, if this hemisphere, hemisphere, hollow hemisphere, no? So it is which kind of geometry? 2d, 3d or 1d? It's a hollow 3d object or not? Uh, huh? So, hollow 3D objects comes under 2D geometry or not? How many times I have to tell you? Uh, it's a 2D geometrical figure, isn't it? So, if it is 2D geometrical figure, then I'll use sigma. Sigma is equal to a small charge because we are going to define the small charge for this ring element. So, it will be dq divided by a small area, isn't it? So, what is the value of dq? It is sigma 2 pi r square in cos theta into d theta. Is that clear? That's my dq. Now due to this, due to this dq, I'll have the electric fields, isn't it? Can you tell me what is the direction of electric field? Look over here. Due to this dq, you can see that from whole of this, there will be, means if I just consider the electric field due to that, it will be present in the total downward direction or not. It is because it is a ring, axial ring, for any kind of a ring, the electric field is present in which direction? Yes. So this is my electric field d. Now what is my d? d is simply dq 
divided by 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by what is the distance of that strip ring? It is r sine theta whole square or not. Sorry, uh, the, I'll, I'll have to consider this as axial length, isn't it? So r, r sine theta is square. One minute. This is going to be a whole lot of case. So dE is equal to <coughs> kdq. One minute. Let me write kdq divided by r square plus x square to the power of 3 by 2, isn't it? So r square is, radius is r cos theta square plus x square which is my r sin theta and that to the power of 3 by 2. That's my d due to the ring, isn't it? Did you got the idea? Is that clear? Completely clear? And wait, 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 wait. So, what is the electric field due to the ring? It is uh, K D K means if you remember the electric field due to the ring, what is the formula of electric field due to the ring? It is K Q X by R square plus X square to the power of 3 by 2 or not. So I am, I am uh, did I have mentioned my x over here? No. So x is what? R sine theta. Is that clear or not? So that's my electric field. Are you able to get me? So this is what? This is r square cos square. I can take r square common. So it will become r square and r square to the power of 3 by 2 is simply r q. So what I will get? K d q sine theta by how much? R square. That's your equation of electric field. Are you able to get me? So now look over here, <coughs> if I follow D, then the net electric field is integral, put the dq value which is k sigma 2 pi r square cos theta and then sin theta and then d theta divided by how much? r square, is that clear? And this theta goes from where? 0 to? 90 degree, isn't it? Because when I will consider 0 to 90, it will create the whole hemisphere or not. So remember that here we do not take the integration of theta from 0 to 180. We basically consider 0 degree to 90 degree. Are you able to get me? Is that clear? You only think, see, in, in one theta, it is creating like this kind of ring or not. Similarly, if it goes till vertical, it will create a hemisphere like this way or not. If it is here, it will create a base like this way or not. So I need to do the integration from where? 0 to 90 because till here it will create the perfect hemisphere. Are you able to get me? Got it? So now look over here. The integration is from 0 to 90. Now r square r square got cancelled. So electric field is what? k is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. So 2 pi will cancel. So it is sigma by 2 epsilon naught, isn't it? 0 to 90 degree cos theta sin theta d theta. Are you able to get me? Is that clear? But what is this? Can I just multiply with 2 and I can write this as what? Electric field is equal to sigma by 4 epsilon naught Integration 0 to 90 degree sin 2 theta d theta. So that is minus sigma by 4 epsilon naught. Sorry, 4 epsilon naught. <coughs> sin 2 theta is cos 2 theta and 0 to 90 degree. Are you able to get me? Is that clear? Is that perfect? Is I'm missing any kind of 2 pi something? And, ha, huh, sorry. If I if it is cos 2 theta, then 1 by 2 will also appear or not? Look over here. This is multiplied by 2x, so 1 by 2 will also appear. Now you can replace it. So you got e net 
for hemisphere in an easy way. This is cos minus sigma by 8 epsilon naught cos 180 minus cos 0 degree, isn't it? But this is minus 1, minus 1 if it is minus 2. So innate is what? Innate of hemisphere is sigma by 4 epsilon naught. Is that clear? So that's my electric field at the center of the hemisphere. How much it is? Sigma by 4 epsilon. Yeah. At the center of hollow. Hemisphere. Write this, then I'll move it. Is this clear? Okay. Now, the question arises that, sir, are we going to really do the derivation all the time or can we have some idea regarding that? The answer is, we can have some idea. We can have an idea like, we will develop an idea for this. Okay. How it is? So, look over here. Basically, we will treat So I, I'll, I'll just place it over here. See. One minute. Hey, why it is not getting, why it is getting vertical only? Can't it rotate 180? Mind, oh shit, it is just flipping. Okay, one minute. Okay, now, now you can see that. See, can I just draw? Like, see, for this, the electric field, let's suppose if I select any kind of, let's suppose if I select any kind of point P, here, here it is selected over here, isn't it? The answer this is my point P, isn't it? So if I want to draw the electric field due to whole sphere, then the electric field will be like in this way, isn't it? And then that electric field will have two components, one towards this side and one towards down, isn't it? Isn't it? So let's suppose this is, I call it as EP. So this has two components, one is E1 and another one is E2. Is that clear? Now. Can we just imagine that I can have another hemisphere in the similar fashion in the down plane? No. Yes. So now look over here. For that also, if I consider this point, then the electric field will be in this direction and it will have two components or one. One horizontal and one perfectly equally and opposite. So these two electric fields which are in the same direction will be balanced by these electric fields along this direction, isn't it? But what about these electric fields? These electric fields can be still counted or not? Are you able to get me? So look over here. But you try to see these electric field, downward electric field will be also balanced by these upwards electric field, isn't it? At this point P. So you try to see if I find out that what is my net electric field at point P. So look over here. See this. So condition is, let's suppose if I try to find out what is my net electric field at point P, basically it is how much? Let's suppose, so the electric field at point P is zero okay the electric field is at point p is zero because of the balance of electric fields are you able to get me okay is that clear
oh sorry balance of electric field already have it because balance of electric field is that clear or not so remember that always it is there for any kind of circular surface for any kind of uh, disc you know that direction since it is a equipotential surface this disc will become equipotential surface and electric field will be kind of perpendicular to it or not so the and other electric fields which are present in the plane direction that's why we call it as it will become zero or the net electric field in the equatorial plane becomes how much zero are you able to get me so that is why the electric field only in the perpendicular direction actually exists and that is present at the center is that clear are you able to get me so remember that this equatorial plane is our kind of equipotential surface there there is a reason for that i'll tell you why you know that try to see try to see potential is given as what k q by r isn't it now you look over here that all these charges are present at the same distance from the center of the sphere or not or from at the center of the sphere isn't it so when i just put it it is how much 1 by 4 pi epsilon not Look over here. Q is how much? Sigma into what is the hemis uh, formula of uh, surface area of hemisphere? It is two pi r square. Yeah, total surface area basically, and divided by r square. So this, ah, uh, sorry, sorry, curved surface area. So r square and r square will get cancelled, and this pi and pi will get cancelled. So potential over here. Uh, sorry, one minute. Ah, uh, not r square. This is r. so this is so one r will get cancelled so potential will be written as what sigma r by 2 epsilon is that clear now radius is constant sigma is constant 2 is constant epsilon not is constant so that means what what kind of surface i am getting i am getting this surface as equipotential surface or not so point is that this particular uh, means if i let's suppose if i select this as origin o and this is point p and if i select any kind of point b so potential at o is exactly equal to potential at b is exactly equal to potential at a because the surface created over here is equipotential in nature are you able to get me and you know that for equipotential surface the net electric field is in which direction perpendicular direction isn't it so that is why the net electric field is in which direction perpendicular direction are you able to get me ठीक है इज दैट क्लियर आर यू एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड मी ओके सो दिस वाज द केस ऑफ हॉलो हेमिस्फेरिकल सेल इज दैट क्लियर नाउ लेट अस कंसीडर व्हाट हैपेंस व्हेन आई कंसीडर द सॉलिड हेमिस्फेरिकल सेल सॉलिड non conducting solid non conducting hemispherical cell are you able to get me so simple like let's suppose if i have basically this will be this is fully shaded got it on so here once again i'll get something like point is uh, i'll have to consider what let's say if it is totally charged so we'll need to consider lambda sigma or rho what what kind of uh, density function i will have yes because it is a 3d solid object so let's suppose the charge density of solid hemisphere be rho is that clear or not so what i need to consider over here 
how I am going to do? Simple. To do this question, you just need to do one thing. Just can we just consider a, a small hemispherical element over here or not? Just say, मतलब solid sphere के हम क्या मानते हैं? छोटा-छोटा small spheres, isn't it? Hollow spheres which has some thickness. तो हम भी यहाँ पे क्या मान लेंगे? It is made up of hemisphere which has some thickness. Dr. Are you able to get me? Is that clear? And it has this hemisphere has radius how much? R. A small r. Got it. But the total radius of the solid hemisphere is how much? Capital R. Are you able to get me? Is that clear? So look over here. Once again, I need to use. Uh, I if I am using rho, rho is what? D Q by here. D V it will be there, isn't it? अरे कुछ तो बोलो हाँ है ना so it will be what dq by dv dv is what area of the hemisphere <coughs> into the into the thickness isn't it so area is how much 2 pi r square and thickness is how much dr that's how you need to understand how to write these small small cases if you want to write area try to write into length into breadth is that clear Yeah, and if you want to write volume, if length is length breadth both are variable, try to into thickness. Okay, is that clear? So our d cube is how much? Rho into two pi r square into how much? D. Is that clear? So if I know my d cube. The electric field once again it will be perpendicular to it. This time it will be perfectly perpendicular, isn't it? And for other electric field they will cancel each other because they are in random random direction. So net electric field will be through the center and perpendicular to it. So D E V is how much? It is K D Q by how much? At what distance it is? R. So K D Q by R square. Is that clear? Are you able to get me? So look over here. What I can put? I can put it simply. K is one by rho two pi r square dr divided by r square. And I can. It is two, isn't it? And this is. This integration must be taken from zero to r, isn't it? Are you able to get me? Uh, one minute, let me see. Is I am missing anything? Uh, no, we can't. One minute. One minute. One minute. Uh, one minute. We can't consider d q d due to d q because d q is spreaded over here. I'll have to multiply with the length once again. Acha, one minute. If I know my d q, try to see d q is what rho into two pi r square into how much d r. Now, can you think that this is nothing but what is two pi r square into d r? That's volume. Ah, that's volume, isn't it? Acha, if I if I can simplify it, wait, wait, wait. Why? Why? I'm telling you one thing. See, if I I can write this dq and I can write this dv also. So electric field I can calculate it using this formula. But the question once again arises that when you are considering dq, then it's spreaded <coughs> all over this plane or not? So you need to once again consider the integration and all those kind of case. Are you able to get me? Means you will have to once again consider those r sine theta, r cos theta terms, so as to find the net electric field. Is that clear? So that's the biggest problem. See, the problem is here I calculated. Here our formula was, in it is sigma. Hey, one minute. It is sigma. 
इट्स ओनली कमिंग एज सिग्मा हाँ सिग्मा बाई एप्सलन फोर एप्सलन नॉट इज एंड इट नाउ हियर इफ आई जस्ट कंसिडर डी क्यू विच इज प्रेजेंट ओवर हियर देन ट्राई टू सी दिस डी क्यू इज प्रेजेंट ऑन माई एरियल एलिमेंट और नॉट एक बात बताओ ये हेमिस्फेयर क्या है हेमिस्फेयर ये थोड़ी ना तुम्हारा वॉल्यूम है इट्स जस्ट अ एरिया और नहीं समझ में आ रहा है देखो सुनो एक बात बताओ आई एम कंसीडरिंग व्हाट आई एम कंसीडरिंग दैट दिस होल नॉन कंडक्टिंग स्फीयर इज मेड अप ऑफ थिन 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 हेमिस्फेयर्स इजंट इट सो व्हेन आई विल कंसीडर व्हेन आई एम कंसीडरिंग द वर्ड हेमिस्फेयर आई एम कंसीडरिंग दैट is i'm considering any kind of full hemisphere no no i'm considering this much thick hemisphere or not so if it is a thick hemisphere then you know that it will be treated like a hollow hemisphere isn't it and that means that ha ah, so it basically a hollow hemisphere is what it is a 2d body isn't it yeah we need to consider in terms of what Area is that clear? Okay, so that will provide us the clear idea. Got it? So try to see. Hmm hmm hmm. So our DQ is what? Rho into two pi r square dr. But for this particular hemisphere, actually sigma will exist, na? So sigma is what? Sigma is DQ by Area which is two pi r square, isn't it? Are you able to get me? Two pi r square. So look over here. So definitely I can write this whole DQ in terms of sigma and rho. Or not. That's the point. Is that clear? So two pi r square is my what? If if I see if I just want to write this DQ in terms of sigma and all. So what I will get? So DQ. Is how much? What I can write it? Uh, what it will become? Tell me. Can I just write one minute? DQ is here. I can write sigma as DQ by two pi r square, isn't it? So DQ is how much? Sigma into two pi r square. So I can just replace DQ over here or not? So sigma into two pi r square is equal to sig rho into two pi r square dr. Just like previous case, देखो जैसे हम लोग lambda का use करते थे ना, yeah. So just like we use lambda, so it means that sigma is what rho into length dr. Is that clear or not? Is that clear? When you know that sig simple that Electric field, see, electric field due to the hemisphere is known in terms of sigma or not. So that's why I wanted to write the sigma. Yeah. So electric field, you know that it will be a small. So for the small hemisphere, the electric field is sigma by four epsilon naught, isn't it? So no need to do all those integral calculations. So it can be written as rho dr by four epsilon naught direct. Is that clear? So I can take this integration from zero to r, and this from zero to e. So net electric field is one second how much? So rho r by four epsilon. Is that clear? So due to the hollow hemisphere, the electric field at the center, e at the center, is given so rho r by four epsilon naught due to my solid sphere. Is that clear or not? Are able to get me, and then once again, if I if I look for potential here, potential was what sigma r by two epsilon naught. So potential at the center, I can just replace rho r and all or not. So it becomes three k q by two r. Is that clear? You can write q in terms of rho, isn't it? And then you can just replace it. Is that clear? ठीक है, so this point, this potential derivation, I want you to do by yourself, homework for you.
okay is that clear samajh mein aaya so we got our hemisphere we got our solid hemisphere also and the question is that we calculated electric field we calculated potential for all these cases so now in your list you have six different cases ring first is rod then you have ring then you have disc then you have uh, <coughs> cylinder then you have solid cylinder uh, and means hollow cylinder and solid cylinder and then hollow sphere and solid hemis solid sphere then hollow hemisphere and solid hemisphere and then last ultimately will be left out with seat is that clear or not so i'll that i'll do later are you able to get me now let us move on to do some questions isn't it so so bol raha hai ki let us do one question and this is one of the finest question which we utilize in physics bol raha hai ki let's suppose there is a sphere a solid sphere okay and along this solid sphere a very small charge is projected theek hai hmm this is my center this has charge plus q and radius r okay this is center o the distance from here to here of plus q is another this charge is r small r yeah and the velocity of this charge towards the sphere is v not initial is that clear this charge has charge q and mass is m okay so question is find the find the minimum value of speed v not such that the charge Such that the charge crosses the sphere. Uh huh. Try to do it one minute.
Okay, try it. Yes, now you got the idea. We have to definitely use work energy theorem. So look over here. Simple thing. Once again, I want to cross. I need something. And uh, we know that whenever this is question of velocity and all. So we apply one basic case that simple electric field is a conservative force. So we can directly apply work energy theorem. So it's better to apply which theorem? Work theorem. And work energy theorem says what? Initial kinetic energy plus initial potential energy is equal to kinetic energy final potential energy. Okay? Is that clear? So initial kinetic energy is It is half m v naught square and initial electrostatic potential energy will be definitely there, isn't it? Which is k cube into capital. small r. Isn't it? Are you able to explain? Now, these charge wants to cross this particular sphere with a minimum means it is asking what should be the minimum value isn't it so that means what if it is asking about if it is if it wants to cross the center then for minimum speed at least it's put a, uh, the kinetic energy or the velocity will become zero over here or not because after see when the velocity at the center will become zero this charge will be thrown with the repulsive force outside, isn't it? So the reason for velocity to be zero is it needs it needs to be zero because it needs to be repelled also. Is that clear? And we know that potential energy final is potential at the center of a sphere into the charge which is moving, which is Q. When we calculated, look over here, we calculated this potential at the center of a sphere, isn't it? So look over here, potential for non-conducting sphere, the potential at the center of a sphere was given as simple. It was how much? It was 3 kq by 2r, isn't it? So look over here, I'll just put it over here. It is, this means that it is equal to 0 plus 3 kq by 2r into a small k. So your equation is, half m v naught square is equal to three k q by two r minus k q capital q by small r. Is that clear? So I can take k q capital q. Is that clear? So your velocity is minimum root over twice k cube capital Q by m 
3 by 2 r minus 1 by r. Is that clear or not? Ah, small r. Is that clear? Take. Um, let me do one more question based upon this. Let's suppose there is an infinitely long wire. Okay. This wire is going till infinity. Okay. And it has the charge density as lambda plus lambda. Coulomb per meter. Why do not? At some distance r, I have another charge which is having charge q and mass m. And once again, it is projected with some velocity towards this infinite charge system, which is V0. Question is no, no, wait. The question is listen to the question. A charge. Q naught or Q is projected towards infinitely long wire with the speed V naught. Question is find the value of V naught. For which the closest distance is closest approach distance is R by two. Yeah. Initially it was at R. Once again, same thing. I want to do, I want to go closest distance. Closest distance means the charge will come at r by 2 and its velocity will become 0, isn't it? So, simple once again, an electric field is a conservative field. I have done these kind of questions for you. Okay, already. So, then kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial is equal to kinetic energy final plus potential energy. Fine. Now initial kinetic energy is half m v naught square and potential energy initial will be what? Let's suppose this is B and this is A. Okay. So can I write B of B potential at B potential at B one minute. Let me write this in perfect time. Half m v curly a small v v naught square. Then potential at B into my moving charge Q is equal to kinetic energy finally it is 0 plus potential at A into my charge Q. Are you able to get me? The equation will be what? Half M V naught square is equal to can I just write B of A minus B of B which can, which can be written as minus B B minus B A. Isn't it? Into charge Q. Now look over here. I calculated BB minus BA for a straight rod right now, isn't it? It is 1 lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught ln R1 by R2, isn't it? Where R1 is nearer and R2 is farther. Is that clear? So look over here. What kind of equation I will get? I will get it as half m v naught square is equal to minus v minus v1 is lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught ln r1 by r2 so r1 is how much r by 2 
isn't it? And uh, R and R two is just R. So this will be your equation, isn't it? So I can write it as what? R by R. If I if I can observe this negative negative sign, so it will be what? Half m v naught square is equal to lambda by two pi epsilon naught ln r by r by two. So it will become what? Ln two. Is that clear? So basically, v naught is suppose that this two and two got cancelled. Lambda by m pi r. So yeah, is this clear? So your whole of Gauss law is over now. Is that clear or not? Now is still one part is left. Like uh, the considering of infinite set, but actually I consider the infinite set with the help of conductors. Go ahead or not? Because there can be conducting infinite set and non-conducting infinite set. Are you able to get me? Yeah. Okay. So tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow uh, we will start with one, one minute dipole moments. Go ahead or not?